John Goleta, Rip, on the panel tonight. She's a CPA, a certified public accountant, a former state rep, and the first to announce that she wants to be the next mayor of Detroit. In fact, she made that announcement right here on Letter Rip. Lisa House is back. Next to her, another CPA, a man who spent several years as the chief financial officer of Detroit and until recently was the emergency manager in the city of Benton Harbor. Joe Harris is here. And then there's a young man born in Boston, raised in Detroit. He's a preacher, teacher, leader, president of the local chapter of Rainbow Push. The Reverend David Alexander Bullock is in the pulpit. And of course, Charlie Langton is here to preach the law. <laughs> a little later, we'll debate the newest challenge to Michigan's ban on same-sex marriages. But right now, let's get back to the numbers. Lisa, the State Review Board said that the city of Detroit has $14 billion in long-term debt, hundreds of millions of dollars of more in short-term debt. But you say those numbers are all wrong. Now, explain it to us for people who are not CPAs, why you say it's wrong. Certainly. First of all, I have a special message to the governor. Governor Snyder, with all due respect, the state's numbers are wrong. My numbers are right. Detroit does not need an emergency financial manager. Now, let me break those numbers down for you, Hill. The state's review team reported nearly $15 billion in long-term financial obligations for the city of Detroit. This past week, I've been talking about the chunks of numbers that's included in there that's inappropriately being included. Number one, there's $6 billion related to uh, water and sewage revenue bonds. These are covered by ratepayers, so there's no risk of default there. They should not be a part of that 15 billion. Now we're down to nine. In addition, there's $5 billion related to other post-employment benefit costs. Other words, meaning retiree health care. We have a solution to address that, but what the state is doing, they're accelerating 25 years worth of future obligations as if it's due today. Now we're down to $4 billion. There's a pension obligation certificate on the on the balance sheet on the liability side however there's an offsetting asset for almost the same amount so that number should not be included in the 15 billion what we're left with is about 2.1 billion dollars that represents interest bearing uh, debt 1.1 billion dollars of it the remaining is OPEP for Detroit citywide but, but I don't want to, but so, it's very complicated but some of those assets though are borrowed money though to pay for that long-term obligation and it's if still you, a debt if you right? but is that true though when you look at a balance sheet You've got to look at your assets minus liabilities. I, that equals equity. So if you were to sell those assets, you could retire that debt. You're not talking about selling uh, the assets. Water department. No, I'm talking about the net pension asset that offsets that POC, that pension obligation certificate. But it's still a lot of money involved here. So are you saying that these numbers were intentionally exaggerated? I would say it's painting a very negative picture that would justify the need for an emergency manager. And as I before stated, we don't need one. When you talk about managing the city's debt, it is managed. Manageable. The $2.1 billion or $1.1 billion in long-term obligations, we have paid in debt service costs $215 million for fiscal year 2012. And that's only 14.8% of our total revenues. $1.5 billion we're talking about in the general fund. So this demonstrates that we can manage. We haven't missed one debt payment, so we're not at risk of missing one in the next 10 months or year for well, that. Well, Joe Harris, you know these numbers very, very, too. You were chief financial officer of the city of Detroit for years. Uh, uh, when you looked at the books, what did you see? Well, uh, let me just uh, say that uh, the trend was down when I looked at it a few years ago, and it's worse than ever now that I've seen the, um, the, 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 the census. As you know, we lost 25% of our population between 2000 and 2010. We lost $100 million dollars from 2011 to 2012, revenues re were reduced by $100 million. We lost $100 million last year. We lost $100 million the year before. So let's forget about, for now, the long-term liabilities that the governor is talking about, which, by the way, we shouldn't forget about in total, but let's just talk about what's happening in the last few years. We can't pay our bills on time. We've been borrowing money Kwame Kilpatrick borrowed over a half billion dollars. Dave Ving has borrowed over $300 million. Let's face it, the fact of the matter is we're borrowing ourselves, we're just digging a deeper hole. Let's just talk about the one, by the way, it's not $1.5 billion anymore for the general fund, it's $1.1 billion. Fiscal and year 2012 reported $1.5 billion. I got it right here in this report. This is the comprehensive annual financial Take a report. look at the general fund. But the bottom line, $1.1 billion. We are 
in financial trouble. Now, you know all sides of this issue in a sense because you were also appointed an EM, first by Governor General Granholm, reappointed by Governor Rick Snyder for the city of Benton Harbor. One of the first things you did there was to fire the mayor and the city council. Did uh, it work? Uh, that, that, that's a, um, that is untrue. Okay. And, and, and that's the word, that's what you'll hear on Rachel Maddow, okay? The fact of the matter is that the law itself removed the mayor and the city council. I made the comment and people said, well, I did it. The fact of the matter is they were removed. They, they, they lost their, not removed, they still hold office. But they just don't get But they money. lost their authority. Power. That's right. They, they lost authority. their power. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, I did remove the finance director. I did remove the uh, the assessor. I did remove the, um, uh, the the building inspector. I did remove the customer service person. I did remove the human resources person. So if so, I might ask a question, yes. who then replaced those people? We, we, did you Joe serve Harris. in all of those roles? I mean, you okay. wear multiple hats. I only see one hat. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> You're making an assumption. No, I'm asking. I, I replaced them. I replaced them with qualified people. I, I, one of the reasons that the commission wanted me out of there was because I replaced the uh, rubbish collector who, that was not the low bidder with the low bidder. We have better rubbish collection now than we ever have <laughs> for less cost. But the fact of the matter is they wanted their friend involved with the rubbish collection. Well, bottom line, when you entered office as emergency manager, the city was in debt to the, what, more than $3 million in debt? Did you solve that problem? Is Benton Harbor now debt-free? No, no. Uh, there's no way that uh, revenue of $6 million a year, uh, we're going to get rid of $3 million of, of, of debt. The fact of the matter is the, the deficit has been reduced and we'll probably do it by the maybe 10 years from now, little by little. What we've done is we have a balance, we have a structurally balanced budget. What does that mean? That means we can pay our bills on time, we can pay for all of our operations without borrowing any more money. But it will take years, it will take years to repay all of the debt, just like Detroit, well, all of the debt that's been incurred Reverend Bullock, years. that's the question for you. Uh, does the, the end justify <coughs> the means? If indeed an EM can solve the financial <coughs> problem in Detroit, why not you invite know, him or her in? Hugh, that's a great question. As a pastor and uh, now as the new chairman of the 13th Congressional District, I must say that we just heard an emergency manager say emergency management doesn't work. The debt has been reduced. Why do you need an emergency manager to come to Detroit when the mayor can just hire someone to work on the problem and, and help to come up with a plan uh, to, to structure the debt. It's amazing. When you look at what the city of Detroit is owed, $800 million owed uh, in business tax revenue, $224 million owed by the state to the city of Detroit. Lisa Howe said it tonight. Uh, the city of Detroit has not missed a payroll. The city of Detroit has, has, has paid its bond obligations. Uh, and, and so this new legislation sends in someone empowered unilaterally to dispel democracy, right, to take away the right of the people, to to make the vote useless, all in the name of a potentially failed promise to over 10 plus years somehow get Detroit back Reverend, uh, on Reverend, a financial straight street, Reverend, that does not Reverend, stand to reason. But Reverend, the city made its obligations because it borrowed because it money. Borrowed money. I could make my everybody well, can we make wouldn't your have to borrow money. The city if, owes all that money. You're just taking you're just taking on new debt to pay current the, current the, problems. The, the, Charlie, Charlie, the, Charlie, the, the, the emergency manager is not going to be able to find of extra the state people. of Michigan to assist us with collecting our income tax revenues, to not cut state revenue sharings in the middle of a budget year. We would not have to borrow well, more money. Treasure, why isn't Treasurer Wayne County doing that? Oh, wait, wait, I wait. can't speak to what the but Treasurer Wayne County is Benton doing, Harbor but in the state of Michigan. Benton Harbor lost $400,000 a year in state revenue sharing. Every city in the state lost That's absolutely right, so we can't use that. But the state has a surplus right now of more than $500 million and for a rainy day fund. Well, it's raining in the city of Detroit. It's storming in the city of Detroit, according to them, thus team an emergency manager send us some emergency funds when you have an emergency in the nation and the president and you the United States respond get they get right the in there right away and that, they solve the problem with this 800 whether it's 800 million or 500 million the problem with that is one-time uh, funds 
It does not solve the structural balance. I understand uh, that. Balance. So I understand that. And then you have an $800 million revenue uh, generated in the water department. This is a record amount. So these are assets here. I talked to someone who, the in the media, I talked to someone, in, I understand that. I talked to someone in media, I won't name any names, and they said in, in the city of Pontiac, they have an OPEP issue as well, but they don't have assets now, to what help. Is o OPEP, yeah, what is the retiree health care. Okay. Other okay. employment benefit, benefit costs. Okay. They have uh, that same issue, but they don't have assets to help cure that problem. Okay. But they said the city of Detroit does. So what that tells me when you ask about agenda and what's at play here, Detroit is rich in assets. The water department just generated $800 million. Well, frankly, That's not contracts for the general and fund. Jobs. Frankly, every candidate still, in the race for, for mayor right now, including you, Crystal Crittenden, uh, Fred Durhall, uh, Mike Duggan and Benny Napoleon soon to announce all of you are on the same side here but what are you going to do you're all on the outside looking in do you intend to file a lawsuit what are you going to do are you going to fight or are you going to try to work with you, you, the governor you, you, to find a solution we're, we're, we're fighting well, back we'll work you know, with the governor back. but he's talking well, about displacing mayors and displacing back. city no, council and trust me you just right said it wait, wait, what no, happened no, in Benton Harbor I did not okay. you okay. said I, that I the law them. the law required that these people be dismissed no dismissed is the wrong word they kept their they kept their positions, but they lost the authority because the emergency manager assumed that authority. It would be the same way under a bankruptcy where a receiver assumes the authority of, and by the way, that's your choice. Okay. So when you, you kick the emergency so manager, so when you kick the mayor out of his office, so so you kick the mayor out of his office. I did not kick as him. The fact that <laughs> I, I mean, we already have a federal judge right, take exactly. over the water department. So as we close, as we close, as we close then, if indeed an EM, if, if he or she is coming, can find a way to work with the elected mayor. I agree with that. Can find a way to work with the elected the council. council. Maybe that is the solution. Well, Everybody what, working we need together to, work to solve the problem. Safety. We got to fix the finances. We got to invest in our neighborhoods. We have to have strong neighborhoods, just like we have a strong downtown. I love what's happening in our downtown. That needs to spill over into the neighborhoods. The people need to feel the effects of the positivity that's coming to the city of Detroit. And as a candidate for mayor, I'm looking to bring. Well, it. let's hope we can all work together. <laughs> be a mayor on with the no same power. solution. <laughs> mayor with no power. Ladies, gentlemen, we thank you.